as a fellow once said to me, Jack, tick tock. You're more like a broken record than a speaking clock. We'll see ya. Hiya, mate. Hiya. Did the dragon swallow the line about where you got the clobber from? Yeah. So, uh, can I see you later for a drink as a mate? I could only say this to a real mate and get me head on. Chance of putting this up with the other Christmas decorations? Mm, very nice. What's this? An early Christmas present from Louise? Something like that, yes. Is she awake? No, no sorry, no. You know, um, she's made a bit of an impression on Dan. He's insisted on doing uh, all the cooking tonight. Uh, well, I don't know if Louise will still be here. Why? Is she thinking of going home? Well, she hasn't said so, but she's on such a knife edge, it's hard to know what she'll do. Listen, I'm sorry I was asleep when you came back last night. It must have been a real late night heart to heart. Huh? Something like that, yes. Not the best preparation for a day in court. Look, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Hey, but hang on. What about poor Tom and Joan in Reading? I mean, are we just going to leave them in the dark about where Louise is? I don't know. I'm not sure what to do for the best. Well, I know that if Dan had gone missing, I'd be out of my mind. Well, it's obvious Louise isn't going to contact them. So, unless we go behind her back... Well, to be honest and speaking as a parent, I just think we should phone them. Oh, and how do you suggest we get their number? Just magic it out of thin air? We haven't even got an address for them. Well, she's got a diary in there, hasn't she? Your dress will be in the front. Can't we come with you, Dad? No, son, that's not such a good idea. And anyway, don't be dead boring. You're better off at school. And listen, don't forget to go straight around to Marvin's after. His mum's expecting you. Come on, give us a hug. Now listen, you two be good, eh? And remember, whatever happens today, I'll always love you both. Because you two mean more to me than anything else in the world. Remember that, yeah? You know, I don't know what kind of life those kids are going to have if he's found guilty. Well, remember. it's not over till it's over. Is Mick still planning to travel with me? That's what he said, yeah. I think he wants to make sure you get one last chance to go through things with him. I don't know. I feel like more like I'm going to an execution than to a trial. Any chance of a lift? Oh, I'm only going to miss me, boss. Yeah, because you can come in and with me. I'll see you later. Oh, come on, Julia. Thanks, love. Oh, I thought I was going to miss all the excitement. Oh. I hope the condemned man ate a hearty breakfast. Julia. So what do you think I should do about the Farnhams, then? There's no point me saying anything, is there? I told you to tell him it was all off and what happened. Keep your mouth shut in future, I think. You didn't have to listen to him sobbing his arse out. He practically told me that it was me having this baby that was keeping him and Susanna together. Any chance of an audience with the boss? Yeah, sure. Is it about the salon? It certainly is. I've been to see the... Hang on a sec. Casey, you couldn't do us a favour just while we sort this business out. Oh, no, you carry on. I've got to get to work. And it's not as if it's have an opinion worth listening to, is it? So, is the loan sorted then? Yep, we could transfer the 15,000 as soon as the paperwork goes through. Well, did they say how long that might take? Middle of next week at the latest, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Congratulations, Mr. Phelan. Sorry, Jack. Hey, and don't forget, I need your bank account details for the transfer. Oh, yeah, right. Um, well, I've been thinking about that, and, well, I was wondering if there was any way we could do the deal in cash. What? You mean like in a brown envelope on a park bench? Go away, no. Well, it's just a bit more convenient for me that way. It shouldn't be a problem. I don't think so. Good. Anyway, you're better off keeping me sweet. You're getting a very good deal here. You wouldn't want me to pull out now, would you? No, don't do that. I don't see any reason why I can't get the 15 grand in cash. Just need to arrange it with the bank in advance, that's all. Right then. Middle of next week. Done. Is that your barrister with Eleanor? Yeah, it is. Eleanor really rates him somewhere. That's what she's writing. Mrs. Johnson still hasn't turned up. Well, I can't say as I'm surprised. No one's had a peep out of her from what I can gather. I just gotta love that. I just wanna get in there and get this thing over with. My back's pouring with sweat. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, it won't be long now. Looks like something's happening. Excuse me. Uh, 
Excuse me, do you think we can get the Oh, car? behave yourself, will you? Now is he a pig? Thank you, partner. Ever so sorry, Your Worship. I thought you were so many mortals. Yeah. Not for me, thanks. Would you like oh. that money for you? Take another one for me, sir. This is it, then. Yeah, well, uh, I'm going to name it Good Luck. Hello, Max. Jackie, how are you? What can I do for you? Well, I, actually, I, I just wanted to apologise for yesterday for breaking down like that. I, I just wanted you to know that I, I don't make a habit of falling apart in front of people. Don't worry about it. Well, thanks for the shoulder to cry on. I, I think I've been on my own a bit too much, you know, with Susanna being away and things just cut on top of me. Yeah, I know. Listen, I was just about to have a coffee and a Danish. You can keep me company for a bit of your life. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, yeah. I told me so much for lunch. Oh, uh, me and Max are just gonna have a coffee and a chat. All right, fine. Uh, can you put an egg mayonnaise to one side for me? Will do, yeah. Mr. Harris, I understand the defendant Elaine Johnson is not present. Uh, yes, Your Honour, that is the situation at the moment. I see. I take it all the prosecution witnesses are present, Miss Reed. They are indeed, Your Honour. Your Honour, uh, my client Michael Johnson is most anxious for this case to proceed today. I will put the case back for an hour, during which time police inquiries can be made. May my client leave the dock? Certainly, but he must not leave the building. See that? Just when we got ourselves settled. Oh, I'll have to go to court three now and see if there's any scandal there I can listen to. Helena, that's just normal. Get someone in the dock and then leaving them to sweat. Look, I can understand it's annoying for you, and under the circumstances, I can understand Judge Bosley's point of view. It's a joint charge, remember, Mick. Elaine should really be in that dock with you. But she's not, is she? What's the point of giving the police an hour to try and find her? They've had weeks to try and come up with nothing. It is just procedure. The fact that Elaine's not here won't go against you, Mick, if that's what you're worried about. I don't know what to think anymore. I've just got a bad feeling about this. There's nothing we can do here now. Come on. No, I must admit, I was concerned when we first considered you. I thought you were never going to say yes. Yeah, well, having a baby wasn't top of my list of priorities at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly made that clear the first time round. Yeah, well, it was never an easy choice deciding to say yeah. Especially when my gut instinct was so against the idea. Well, it must have taken a lot of soul searching. Just a bit. No, to be honest, I knew I could use the money to sort a few problems out with this place. Things that were screwing up my whole future and more or less killing me dad. But the thing is, well, now that I've had more time to think about it... Strange, isn't it, though? I mean... <laughs> The way you reacted the first time round, you thought we were mad, but now... But that's what I'm trying to say. I don't think you do understand how I feel now. I do. Well, at least I'm beginning to realise. It started off as a business arrangement. But recently, you've come to see how much having a baby for us means to us. I hope you don't mind me being so open with you. No. No. It's just that I really feel that Susanna and I are growing a lot closer to you. We're developing a, a real understanding, aren't we? This is desperate, sir. All their lives, I've talked to my kids about doing the right thing. And accepting your punishment when you've done something wrong. And I'm sitting there now facing years behind bars. And the worst punishment that I can think of. Missing my kids growing up. And I don't really believe that I've done anything wrong. I know this sounds terrible, Sin, but in some weird kind of way, I'm proud of what I did. I'm proud I had the goods to help Gladys when she needed it. Yeah, well, I know one thing, Mick. Gladys would have been proud of you and all. And I bet she's somewhere up there looking down on this and rooting for you. Wow, well, 
I suppose if I can't expect the miracle, then maybe a guardian angel will have to do. You just relax. You don't have to worry about how you're looking up with me on the job. Okay, I'm at your mercy. I'll tell Kylie when I pick her up from school tonight. She's taking me to Santa's Grotto in town. Oh, she'd be made up with that. I don't know about Kylie. I can't wait myself. <laughs> so, where are you singing tonight? Some hotel over the water. I'll be a sec. It won't be a minute, OK? Yeah, they're laying on the cabaret for some Christmas party. I don't remember Cher doing any festive numbers. They'd be so full of Christmas spirit, they won't care what I sing. Hey, I hope you're still going to talk to me when you're rich and famous. I might. Look, Peter, I've been thinking, um, I might give up my job, you know, in the chippy, and concentrate on my singing. What do you think? Well, you're the boss, Lens. Well, this might be my big chance with all these gigs lined up. Listen, Lens, whatever you want's all right with me. <sighs> Listen, you've been right behind me all the way, taking a bigger share in this place. It's only right I should back you in your showbiz career. Anyway, it's not the done thing for a star to be serving chips, is it? <laughs> I suppose not. Anyway, how's your deal going with Jackie? Oh, it should all be sorted out next week. Hey, you don't know anyone who wants a job as a minder, do you? You are? Well, Jackie wants the money in cash, so I'm going to need a bit of protection, aren't I? <sighs> is the cheque not good enough for her, then? Oh, you know what else my boots is like. Probably tax man on her back. <sighs> oh, you look fabulous. You're going to knock him dead. It's all that exciting, isn't it? I'm really looking forward to tonight. Make a nice change from singing in the British Legion or some old dives. Well, listen, as I'm not allowed to go with you, you've got to promise me one thing. What? You stay away from under any mistletoe, OK? You can tell them fellas from me, you can look, but that's their lot. <laughs> There's only one man in your life. Right, now what can I do you for? What can you tell me, Miss Reed? The police have made their inquiries. Apparently, nobody knows where Elaine Johnson is. As there's been no sign of her for some time, it looks as if she's deliberately trying to avoid these proceedings. Quite so. In view of the fact that she should have been here an hour ago, I will issue a bench warrant for her arrest. For my part, Your Honour, I would prefer the case against Michael Johnson not to proceed. Not until the police have had the opportunity to exhaust all avenues of inquiry into the disappearance of Elaine Johnson. Your Honour, I can only reiterate my client's desire that this case should proceed as soon as possible. What do you think? I think you're going to be able to do your Christmas shopping this afternoon. I think he's going to pull it. Do you think he's got the racing page open up there? Under the circumstances, I am minded to allow more time for Elaine Johnson to come forward. In the case of Michael Johnson, he will remain subject to the existing bail conditions and return here at the convenience of the court. It's been postponed. Oh, hey. Mick's got it all hanging over him again now. And I've got a week's supply of evidence here. Mick, that's it. So what happens now? We pack up our things and go home, I'm afraid. The judge doesn't want to proceed without Elaine being here. What, and he can do that? He can, and he just has. Changed. Hey, you're nervous, aren't you? I'd be. Oh, God, I've never done as many songs in one set before. You'll be brilliant. You always are. I'll keep everything crossed for you. Yeah, but I'm like this now. When am I going to be, like, on stage? You'll be fine when you get going. Come on, this is a picnic compared to sing like a star. Believe in yourself. <laughs> oh. Oh, everything OK? Uh, yes, thanks. Oh, I wish you'd let me give you a bit more of a trim, you know, a cut-off. Uh, maybe next time. OK. Flag's drawn, anyway. I still can't believe you didn't tell Max. Don't go on at me, Casey. Why not? You wasted an ideal opportunity to tell him it was all off. I tried. You could have done it if you really wanted to. No, that's the point. I don't think you've really made up your mind to the house of this. Well, I have. It doesn't seem like it, the way you're carrying on. Look, I will do it. It's just so hard. I feel so responsible for them. It's stupid. It's not your problem. I know, but they've put everything into this. If I back out now, they'll have nothing left. I mean, what if they do something stupid? Like what? I don't know. 
They're so desperate for the child, they'd be devastated to survive back out now. And if anything happened to you, they'd feel like it was my fault. Oh, come on, if you think that they're off the head, they're not fit to be having a baby to look after, are they? You know what I mean. All I know is that you don't need that money anymore, so you should tell Max it's all off. Oh, cheers, mate. I tell you what, I didn't expect to be back here so soon. Look, I better get round to Marvin to pick the kids up. Well, don't worry about that. I'll go round there and pick the kids up. You go and get the kettle on. Oh, nice one, Sam. Hey, listen. Thanks for your support today, both of you. You take care, love. All right, Julia. See you now. See you later. You all right there, Juliet? Oh, Nick. Does he know if he's coming or going, does he? No, he doesn't. Well, I don't suppose you want dropping off home, do you, Julia? No, you can drop me off the Legion, please, love. I can squeeze some extra practice in for the Christmas show. Oh, I've got so much on my plate. What with being co-producer and having a major part. Major part, eh? Well, I hope you've learned your lines. Oh, no, there aren't any lines. I just have to sit looking regal. I'm playing the part of Britannia. Oh, right. Which part are you playing? The front end or the back? One coffee. For the hard work and solicitor. Thanks. And one phone for the responsible parent. I am going to have to phone them, aren't I? Well, just tell them that Louise is safe. God, this is really going to freak them out. Talking to me after 18 years of trying to pretend I didn't exist. It's ringing. Louise isn't going to come barging in, is she? No, no, no. She's in town. She won't be back for ages. I don't think there's anyone home. Oh. Um, hello. Is that, um, Tom Hope? Well, no, no, you don't know me. Um, I'm calling about your daughter, Louise. No, 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 she's fine. No, she's, um, been staying with us for a couple of weeks. Sorry, could you just hang on a minute, please? He wants to know who I am. I really think you're going to have to tell him. Oh, it's that Louise. No, no, don't panic. It's just Max. I'll get it. Hi, uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, my name's Eleanor. Eleanor Kitson. I'm Louise's... <laughs> I'm Louise's real mother. Ah, I, uh, I see. I've come at the wrong time. Yeah, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm just a bit preoccupied at the moment. Right. Um, look, I'll, I'll go. Uh, Max? Are you OK? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I've just had a bit of a week of it, that's all. I just wanted to get fancy the beer over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Uh, I think I'll be ready for one myself by then. <laughs> Why, something else? Well, let's just say that the sudden arrival of Louise has, uh, well, hasn't been very easy on Eleanor. Sure, yeah, it must be hard on her. Yeah, she's making a bit of a difficult phone call right now. I better get back inside. Right. Well, listen, uh, I'm up for the weekend, so I'll see you then. Yeah, see you later. Bye. should be having a brandy, not another coffee. Well done. I know how hard that was for you. It was very strange, talking to Tom like that, knowing that he was the one who brought up Louise. He sounded very shocked. Well, it's hardly surprising. But they were relieved to hear some news of her. I mean, they'd been out of their minds with worry. Tom was desperate to come and see her. He wanted to put Joan in the car and drive straight here. You put him off. Well, I hope so. I didn't think Louise would be too impressed, especially as she doesn't even know that I've contacted them yet. How did they seem? Were they worried that she might want to stay with you long term? Oh, Tom didn't say that in so many words, but... Well, I tried to make it pretty clear that the arrangement was only temporary. I'm going to have to tell her I called them, aren't I? She's going to blow a fuse. I know she will. 
You can handle her. I'm not so sure, Ollie. I've been rooting through her bag, through, through her private things. I've gone behind her back and phoned Tom and Joan. I mean, she's going to feel completely betrayed. Is your name Lindsay Corkill from Sing Like a Star? Yeah. Thought so. My brother-in-law saw you in a show. Oh, yeah. Well, where was that? Uh, Norwich. Yeah, uh, didn't you go down there to do a TV show or something? <laughs> or was it just to do the business with Barry Grant? Um, am I supposed to know you or something? You've met my brother-in-law, though. In fact, you spent most of that weekend with him. His name was Callum. Callum Finnegan. And my husband is Alastair Finnegan. Aye, aye. Oh, you All right, so. <laughs> hey, no, listen. There's two new rules in this house. No one's allowed to mention the word court or trial until the new year. That's going to be a bit of a trial, isn't it? What if your court's yours? Hey, get out of here. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. So what do you want from me? A lot of help. How? You know what happened to Callum. I know you do. I know you were there. He tried to rape me. He always was an animal. His wife isn't, though. Do you know what I went through when Alistair was missing? He's still in hospital with kidney trouble after the Barry Grant weight loss diet. Look, I don't give a monkeys about what's happened to Callum. I made a deal with Grant that I keep Alistair in line and alive. And I will. But Sheena is still going through hell, wondering what's happened. If there's any hope that Callum's still alive. And am I supposed to care? Only about yourself. If Sheena carries on like she is, she's eventually going to try and have a go at Grant. So, like her idiot husband, she'll probably have a go at you. Me? Why, well, I've got nothing to do with him anymore. <laughs> it's not what you feel about him. It's what he feels for you. I saw it in his eyes this morning. You're his soft spot. How oh, is this ever gonna stop? It's all part of the package. So, how can I help? Find out from Grant exactly what's happened to Callum. Once she knows, Sheena will calm down. And if I don't? You may be a bit naive, but you're not stupid. We have a top Friday night with Ellen at 9.35, Fraser at 10 and the last in this series from Rory Bremner at 10.30. It all kicks off in a couple of minutes with Robin Williams and Billy Crystal guest starring in Friends. Dad. No. No what? No, you're not having any money. Hey? You heard? I'll get it. Evening, Michael. All right. It's Bing's NF membership finally oh. come through then. Who's still here? Who said anything about money? <laughs> <sighs> I 
Well, just a few quid for me Christmas shopping. Uh, I believe begging pays quite well this time of the year. And what kind of a mince bag excuse for the father is that? The kind who's up to his eyes, trying to bing the rides his crappy yeah, excuse yeah, for yeah, the yeah. pantomime. And I'll tell you what, don't expect any socks under the Christmas tree from me. Oh, you mean the socks that I'll probably be paying for anyway? Well, I don't think I'll lose much sleep. Merry Christmas, Ebenezer. Oh, Lord. The curse strikes again. Not another one. Why, what's up? There's a rampant flu bug running through our entire cast. They're dropping like flies. Who this time? Who could you least afford to lose from a Yuletide extravaganza? Oh, hey, not Santa. Oh. Girls. It's for a good cause. What do you think? Oh, I'm not being the back end of a dragon for no one. You do a good impression of the front pit most of the time. <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't ask if we weren't desperate. Oh, well, thanks very much. You know what I mean. No, oh, come on, I'm doing the makeup. We'll have a grin. Well, can't you find anyone else? You're me only hope. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I understand, love. But it's your poor father that I'll be worried about. He'll be absolutely devastated. Julia, all right, you win. Oh. How are you, me? Hi. Hi. So, how did the Christmas shopping go? I got pretty much everything I need. Was it busy? Absolutely packed. What a full of bog-eyed maniacs all chasing that last el elusive MSV neck sweater. Thank you, Mr. Misery. No, you're right. It's like a war zone. Makes you wonder why we bother. Because it's Christmas. Would you like some tea? Yeah. I'll just get this stuff upstairs. Are you okay? What am I gonna do? Well, if in doubt, tell the truth. You've been putting it off for long enough now. Oh, I'm scared I'm gonna blow everything. Well, keep putting it off, and her mum and dad will arrive uninvited. Then you'll have blown it. Yeah, you're right. Be brave. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, I was hoping I'd catch you. Well, you're in luck. No work tonight? No, I thought I'd leave them to it uh, tonight, just for a change. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? Well, I've come to invite you to the Legion Panto. Oh, really? Got a complimentary ticket for you and everything. Right. Mm, where is it? There you are. They're like gold, just these. Uh, Julia, to be honest with you, um, tonight I I'm rather busy. <laughs> Sat here on your tod, eating your food out of a tray, no telly on or nothing. So? <laughs> well, the place is like a morgue. I'm sorry, love. <laughs> it's all right. I'll just go. Julia. Um, I'll try and get down there. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, what the hell. Um, thanks. Oh, you're welcome, love. I'll see you down there, eh? Bye. Right, there's your raffle tickets. Sir. 25 pence each or five for the pound. Gotcha. And Michael, remember, Santa Claus is supposed to be full of the joys of spring. That's a miserable sark he gets. Yeah, all right. And, uh, he's supposed to be sober and all OK. You know, I don't know how you managed to get 20 quid out of me for doing this. See you later. How the Nazis celebrate Merry Christmas? By Von Dixon. One, two. One, two, three. Who's a naughty boy, then? Um, sorry, love, we're not open yet. This place is always open for me, love. Got to get here handy, you know. Grab a speck for the panto. Yeah, yeah, um, I so. I'm Beryl. Santa. Oh, bit of a comedian, eh? <clears throat> I'll be keeping my eye on you. What's Hong Kong got to do with Christmas anyway? My sentiments exactly. About as much as an Arabian ne'er-do-well and his gang of thieving brigands, actually. 
Take no notice, love. We swallowed the diction years ago. Does it matter? We're here now, are we? That's the spirit, Katie. OK, Vic, that's you, done, love. Come on, Winston, lad. This is all your fault. Would you stop moaning and get your cosy on? <laughs> <laughs> You all look marvellous. Hi, Tanya, at last. Well, I'm sorry I'm late, love, but I've been polishing my helmet up with a bit of brasso. Oh, that looks <laughs> splendid, Julia. Yeah, you can see your face in that, Julia. Not that you'd want to. Say something, Ron. Who, me? Oh, not a word, Julia. Good job, unless you wanted to feel the prongs of air trident. Weather some, don't you? <laughs> Hello? No, Auntie Val, she's not here. She's on her way round. Yeah, 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 Carly's fine. We're all OK. Yeah, OK. Bye-bye. Hello, Paddy Graham, please. Oh, um, what time will he be back? Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, I'll call later. No, no, no message. No. Bye. There you go. Thanks. Would you like a biscuit? Yeah, please. Where's Danny? He's at his mum's. Can I get you a top-up? No, thanks. Louise, mm -hmm. um, there's something we need to discuss. Fine, oh, why? Well, uh, I don't quite know how to put it. Is she miscommunicative with her clients? Um, I think that what Eleanor's trying to say... Uh, don't you think Eleanor should speak for herself? Fair enough. Um, not being given notice to quit, am I? No, no. Uh, I, um... I phoned your parents. You did what? I had to. Uh, they needed to know you were safe. How would you know what my mum and dad need? We thought it was for the best. Well, how did you get their number? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, it matters to me. From your diary. You looked in my diary? In my bag? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear it. I, I was worried about you. Worried? I'm sorry. You haven't got the right to worry about me. Now, it's all perfectly straightforward. When Ron gives you your cue, you enter from stage right there, see? And then you quite simply follow Julia and myself off stage left here. Right? Is that it? That's a piece of cake. Bing. Phone. Oh, right, right. All this effort for three seconds on stage. Oh, that's your biz. If you don't stop belly aching, you can whistle for that 15 grand. Oh, it's all right for you, Mr. Makeup Man. I'm a dragon's bum here. <laughs> Is it Krauser's? Hey, love, could you give us some of this tie? Yeah, in a minute. I hate these things. <sighs> I don't know when we know who turns up. Too late for that. Why are you there? Max Farm. Where? In the corner. Isn't it? <sighs> That's Andy, isn't it? Because after our standing ovation, you can tell me on Adam's kids. Casey, can't you? I'm going to do my dad's tie. <laughs> Go away. You're not my mother and you never will be. Even if I have the operation. <sighs> Sorry. Thinking of leaving us? Looks that way. Do you mind if I, um... <sighs> I must warn you that I may be about to speech. Free country. Allegedly. Don't go. Why not? Because it won't get any of us anywhere. Maybe Eleanor should have thought of that before she went through my stuff. She did. She went through 
many, many different scenarios before she made that call. It wasn't an easy thing for her to do, but, well, she really felt that she had to do it. Well, she, she was wrong. Maybe. But I know your mum and dad don't feel that way. Well, I do. Well, if I was in your shoes, I'd probably feel the same. But I'm not. And neither is Eleanor. You know, we're just the old fogies who are lumbering around trying to shoulder the burden of responsibility. She hasn't made much of a job of it so far. She knows that. And, well, that's why maybe sometimes she tries too hard. All I'm asking is that you give her a chance. What do you say? Are in yet? It's um, it's his cousin Lindsay. I need to talk to you. It's the bloody Finnegans. How long will you be? One and a half hours. Hurry up. I made the decision to come looking for you and I wanted to decide if you should meet my mum and dad when I thought the time was right. But I can't now. I've been thinking about this moment, planning it for ages, and now you've taken it away from me. It's not fair. So what's your next move? I'll phone them, OK? I don't suppose you've any idea what I'm supposed to do with this. Look, you better get your nail in the kicking off now. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to our little Christmas extravaganza entitled End of the Empire. Oh, just in case anybody's wondering, that's a British Empire, not the Liverpool one. <laughs> Let us take you on a magical mystery tour of our chequered history around the world. We'll take you from Australia to India, rocks drift to Africa, from Aiton to Naughty Ash. <laughs> but first, let's meet the stars of our show. Two people without whom we would never have had the nerve to wander around the world telling everybody else what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Britannia and John Paul. <laughs> Hi, Mum. It's me. I'm fine. How are you? I oh, know. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Mum. Don't cry. Just check in. 216 is correct. There you are, our kid. Well done. That'll put hairs on your chest. <laughs> if not in his head. <laughs> Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we come to tonight's star prize. Oh, isn't it exciting? Which is this bumper bottle of bubbly. Ooh. Is that it? Samson, if you will, please. 
Pink 36. Pink 36. Oh, it's me! I'm Pink 36. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Come on, Julia. Let's have a look. <laughs> That's right. There you go, love. Oh, but he's a top. Yeah, well, it should keep you out the long off for a couple of days, shouldn't it? <laughs> there she goes. Liverpool's answer to Julie Garland. Well, in the drink stakes, anyway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, to coin a phrase, that's your lot. Aww. Hope you had a good time, and we'll see you all next year. Till then, Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Bye, Merry Christmas! Right, cleared that lot away, you can clock off. Um, I haven't had my prize oh. yet. She threatened to kill you. I thought you said it was all over. Well, so I thought. That's women's lib for you, though, isn't it? In the old days, the wives kept out of it, just spent the money. It's not funny. Well, it won't be for her. You let one of them off and he always come back for more. She's doing this on behalf of her sister-in-law. What would she do if you killed her husband? Sounds like my type of woman. So, what are you going to do? Have a chat, I suppose. Does that mean what I think it means? What, you mean two people having a conversation? Yeah. So all she wants to know is exactly what's happened to Rob Roy, yeah? Understandable. I mean, the worst bit's not knowing. So do you want me to tell her? I don't want to be dead. I mean, do you want me to tell her the truth? I was there, wasn't I? Forgive me, but if you hadn't pulled him off me, I would have killed him myself. Who says he's dead? Did you see me kill him? Well, did you? Who's to know? But I better go and find the Queen of Scots. I'll give her a story. Tell her to call the clans off. Don't go. What? Go yet. Why? Because. And you, Mum. Say bye to Dad for me. I'll see you then. Bye. Everything okay? Fine. So have you decided? Yeah, I have. I'll stay on here for a couple more days, if that's all right with you. Yeah, of course. And then I'm going to go home for Christmas. Right. Um, well, do you want us to run you back? No, it's all right. Mum and Dad are going to come get me. Oh, but it's no problem. I know it's no problem, but that's the plan. Right, sure, whatever. <laughs> if you want to meet them, they'll be here Friday. So it is, everyone? You mean Peter? Don't tell me you've forgotten about me already. And don't look at me like that. After what you've just done to me upstairs. <gasps> what I've just done to you? Don't be like that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just guilt. I wish things could be different, then. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah, then. Wow, Don't was say what... anything. It's all mad. That was mad. The, the Finnegan stuff is mad. But I'm just me, bad. I can't handle it full time. I can't. So where is everyone? Um, my mum's taking our Carly to Auntie Val's. My dad's down at the chippy and Peter. He's um, helping out with some stupid panto down at the Legion. There's me wondering what you're seeing, am I? I mean, how am I going to compete with him? Do you want something to eat? No, sir. I've uh, got to see Rob Roy's missus. Then I've got to go back down south. But, um, you can call me. You know where I am. Any time. For anything.
Same again. You'll have a point, Max, please. Nothing for me, Max, thanks. Well, have you had enough excitement in your life for one night? Yeah. Oh, come on, Bing, you haven't still got a cob on because it was ad lip in. No. No, I suppose it went pretty well, all things considered. Yeah, well, I tell you what, it'll be the highlight of our Christmas, I'll bet you. It's a rather gloomy thought. Well, what else have we got to look forward to? You've got no jeans spoon-feeding your roasties, have you? I've got no Bev forcing veggie burgers down my throat instead of turkey. Not even Didi to have a good row with. Hmm. Yeah, Patricia's off on around the other side of the world, and... Yes, your two have got their own lives to lead, haven't they? Hey, come on! You meant to say snap out of it! That made me feel more depressed. Sorry. Well, I'll tell you what, I have had just about enough of it. <laughs> How do you fancy making a New Year's resolution? I'm all ears. Right. But why don't we start living a bit while we still can? Yes. Yes, why don't we? I'll have that other pint after all. Hey, hey, forget the pint. I'm going off on the pull. And I'm going to make you a solemn promise right here and now. This time next year, I am going to be knocking a slice off some rich widow with a bad cough and a cottage on the edge of a golf course. What do you say? Sounds like a mustard plan to me. Don't think I've forgotten them driving lessons you promised me either. I think you'll find that Susanna made that particular promise on my behalf. I might be a bit busy over the next couple of weeks, but... Um, Whenever you can fit me in. Eh? As soon as Peter's got himself organised in the salon takeover, I'll be knocking on your door. Salon takeover? Yeah, have you heard? He's buying part of Jackie's show. Up front? Yeah. For cash? Well, I don't think he's paying it in shampoo. <laughs> Uh, seen Jackie about? Um, she's gone. You've just missed her. Oh, damn. Can I give her a message? No, no, no. It's all right. Um, do you know anything about this salon on takeover? A bit late. Mm. Any idea how much she's selling it for? Why? No, I'm just interested. 15,000, I think. Do you know why she's selling it? Well, she's got debts to pay. Once they're out of the way, she'll be free to go and run the bar. She'll still own off the salon and everything can get back to normal then. No hassle from anyone. <laughs> See ya. Well, time will definitely tell for Jackie tomorrow at 8 when Brookside returns. Time's also pretty crucial for a science fiction Jack the Ripper per next on 4. Malcolm McDowell stars in a thriller with a twist in time. Coming up, no time at all. You'll copy the contract. As soon as you've got the cash, get back to me and we'll sign. Brilliant. So when are you going to the bank then? In a minute. Gotta go and see Lynn's first. Good. <sighs> my butterflies are going like mad here. <laughs> right, sir. Deal day today. Oh, great. Um, you late for work, aren't you? No, yeah, I got the morning off to enroll at college. I didn't know you were off studying. Oh, yeah. I'm the one to train me up as a proper legal secretary. Oh, crap. We're all going up in the world. So, where do you want to meet then? The bar? Nah, blow it. Let's go posh. Big day, innit? How about Grant's? No, um. My treat? No, I don't know if fancy. Why not? Be nice, that. I mean, no, I haven't got to see Max about something. Yeah, yeah, I have. I hope you're coming in our brains of Britain. Oh, something to do with me. So what? I might need a sharp legal brain to check the small print, mightn't I? Oh, go on then, you've twisted me arm. Tease up. Oh, gracias, senor. Country living. Good lord. Correct. 
Here. Got another one here. The lady? You want a look? <laughs> no, thanks. Not exactly my bag, as they say. Your loss? To be perfectly honest, I wouldn't have thought they were yours either. Hey, this is research, mate. Into what, exactly? Into where all the posh beds do the boozing. I wasn't aware that either of those published a good pub guide. <laughs> no, they don't. But I'm reading the addresses on the letters page and the articles on all these posh golf club do's that they go to. Looks like Cheshire's the place, mate. Really? Too right. Listen. I reckon we get ourselves a load of new gear, track down a couple of the over 50s on the old stockbroker belt, and fill our boots. Excuse me, Peter. All right. Uh, have you got a minute? I, I, I won't keep you long. Thanks. Um, what's up? Um, well, I hope you don't mind me asking, but I just wondered if you could confirm or deny um, a certain rumour that's flying around. Look, for the last time, I have not had a sex change operation. It's <laughs> 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 a very good... <laughs> Good, yeah. yeah, but I, I was wondering about that other rumour, the one about Jackie Dixon selling you her part of the hair salon for £15,000. Well, you're well informed, aren't you? So it's definitely true? Well, it was meant to be definitely confidential. Yes, absolutely, of course. Um, but strictly between me and you, yeah. All I've got to do is hand over the dosh. Right. Why? You're not thinking of putting in a rival bid, are you? No, 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 no. No, I was just interested, that's all. Well, now you know. Well, thanks for your time. Hey, and about that other thing, if anybody else tells you my name used to be Petra, you just plant them for me, OK? See you, Tra. Right. You off now? Before I get roped into the joys of domesticity. Well, someone's got to do it. Hey. Are you OK? You've been a bit preoccupied over the past few days. Is it cos I've been spending too much time on this panto? Oh, nah. Just thinking about life, you know. Would I still be doing these sheets if I'd have one thing like a star? I'll be in the cab. Hey, you just wait till I've got that salon under my own name. The world will be our oyster. Oh, all right, boss. Well, I see, sir, Jimmy. Uh, no? Um, why don't you just come in? I thought you were... In the Midlands? Yeah, well, I had some business to sort out up here. Talking of which, I've got a meeting with the bank manager. I'll see you later. Good luck. Is everything all right? I've been to see Rob Roy's missus. And? It's like I told you, everything's finished. And what about you? Ah, oh, you know. Leaking washing machines, dirty sheets. Life goes on. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? with all its complications. Katie? Hi. Um, is Jackie around? Uh, no, she's gone into town. Well, any idea when she's back? No, but she's going to Grant's for a lunch later. Oh, right. Well, to see me? No, to meet Peter, to celebrate the new deal. See ya. You realise we'll have to have a change of image. I wasn't aware I had an image in the first place. Oh, oh yeah. I'm afraid we'll have to sack the old Marks and Spencer's v -necks. Why? Why? Because we've got to get some nice suits, haven't we, like your landed gentry? But a tweed for the weekends. I thought we were targeting the grieving widows of deceased sausage manufacturers, not the aristocracy. Yeah, fair to us, Ben, but we still got a lot to part, haven't we? I'm rather fond of a nice lamb's wool v-neck. Yeah, really. Can't stand them myself. Do you know what? That's the one advantage of having your birthday on a Christmas day. You still only get half the boring sweaters every other poor sod gets. I had a cousin who had the same birthday as you. He used to celebrate his on the 25th of June. Lucky get. No one even noticed, man. All too busy opening their own presents. 
If I got a mince pie with a candle stuck in it, I was lucky. Oh, come on, Ron, it's not that bad. Really? Imagine having your bedtime birthday treat cancelled every Christmas Eve because of midnight mass. That was life with Dee Dee. Then, of course, Bev decides to give birth on Christmas morning, so little Josh gets all the attention. Believe me, mate, it stinks. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya, you're yeah. Thank you. Do you really want to see me dad? The only thing he's ever had of interest is you. So, uh, Vidal's still trying to make the big time then, is he? Well, if he gets this loan and buys Jackie Dixon, I reckon he'll be on his way. He's quite good at it, actually. I cut near. So, when are you going back? When I've finished up here. Finnegan's? Well, I'll be okay now. You said that last time. Well, that was before I knew about Sheena, Queen of Scots, wasn't it? What did you say to her? What she wanted to hear. And you do that to all your women? Only the ones that I don't care about. Which is why I keep telling you, Scissorhand is not the one for you. Oh, don't Barry. Okay. We said we'd be mates. So I'm telling you the truth. You're bigger than him. You can go further. You don't even know him. You hardly know me. Oh, I know you, all right. I've seen you in action. You're like me. You want more. You want more than flaming sheets and housework. And you can have it, if you want it. With you, you mean? Between your sheets? This isn't about me. Or me and you. It's about what you want. And don't give me any of that dopey female crap. You want more than blue rinses every Friday morning. Well, don't you? Private room and everything, eh? Can't beat a bit of preferential treatment. Oh, sorry. That's OK, Mr Feely. I'll do that. Please. What? I don't want to fall into bed with you again. I don't want you to. What a deal. But not right now. So what do you want? Right now? Why are you here? I don't know. To be honest with you. I know you won't ditch us soon. Look, I'm sorry. I know you've got Kylie to think about and your mum and dad and all that other garbage, but... Look, you didn't enter that thing like a star competition cos you were happy battling fish for the rest of your life, did you? Oh, this does my head in. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I hate it. I hate whether it's sausage or saveloy. I hate stinking of grease. I hate that stupid washing machine. I would love to swan around like Finnegan's wife. I would. Barry, I love the diamonds and the pearls you offered me. Should have seen the ones she had on. They were like that. I'd love it all, but I can't. I just couldn't handle everything else. Yes, you could. It's not about mugging old ladies or robbing gas meters. It's about hating those who hurt you. Or those that you love. Is that why you help Jackie Dixon? Love her, do you? I had my reasons. And remember, in all of this, there's one person that I love more than anyone else. And that's me. <sighs> so you take on anyone who got in your way? Anyone. Been doing a few repairs. Looks like somebody else has as well. Look, um, there's a leak at the back. It needs fixing before it gets any worse. Like most things. 
I'd better get going, then. Um, hang on a minute. We've... I've got about half an hour. What is this, eh? Goodbye. One last time. And then back to... And back to mates. Nothing else. Sorry, mate, that was my fault. That's all right, mate. I could have fixed myself up with a bit of stuff if I wanted. Pick head and a bread in the house. Yeah, but look, what I'm trying to say is, it's hardly a cosy little arrangement, is it? Eh? So? Well, what I'm trying to say is, you must know that I feel something really strong for you. I don't know what you feel. Well, that is the score. I know you're entitled to have a pop at me. And you're sick of getting messed around. But at the end of the day, all I'm really doing is following my heart. Hiya, Mum. I'll be down in a minute. Put the kettle on. Oh, yeah, all right. Gasping for one myself. I'll go and try and keep her out the way. What am I supposed to do? Turn into a teddy bear or something? For you? I didn't need a postie. I am the postman. Happy birthday. Huh? What's this being an early present? Well, if your birthdays are clouded by Christmas, I thought that... Cheers, mate. It's not M&S vouchers, is it? Golf lessons, yes! An essential step in every man's quest to snare a wealthy widow. Not half. <laughs> now, I've got a mashy niblick and a few other sticks in a bag somewhere. Fancy a gentle practice session? Too right, mate, too right. Yes! <laughs> Hiya, Mum. You never must like it. No, I'm, I, I was just about to get a shower. What's that? What? That noise? I didn't hear anything. Liz, if you've got peace up there, just tell me. You know. I haven't. Well, do what? I don't know what you're talking about, Mum. You won't mind me having a look, then, oh, Mum. Let me past. No. Pardon? There's nothing to see, says him. Says me. Look here, it's better as the same and eh, Jackie? I'll just get off, eh? Well, you know where the door is. Oh, sorry, Liz. I'm sorry. Hey, there was no need to dial 999. What? Tell him I've got to come quietly, eh? Peter, what are the police doing here? Looks like someone's been a naughty boy, eh? Listen, you've been here to see Jimmy, all right? Yeah, all right, whatever you say, Jack. See you, Liz. See you. All right, thanks, Jack. Tell him I'll see him later. All right, mate. All right. What's up, babe? What are the police doing here? Got, got robbed. What, what do you mean, you got robbed? A fellow jumped me outside the bank. Joking. Oh, my God. The money's gone. All of it? 
Are you all right? I mean, you didn't hurt you or anything? No, no, the hell he knew what Listen, love, why don't you sit down? Come on, I'll put the kettle on. Oh, I've got to go and see Jackie Dixon. Can't that wait? You could be in shock or anything. No, I've got to go and sort it out now. You sure? Yeah. I'll see you later. An accident on the Runcorn Bridge has reduced... Oh! Dixon lines up this pot for the open. The crowd are silent. <laughs> yes! Bing! Did you see that shot? Hey! Tiger Woods, eat your heart out. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi. Hiya. Sign of your friend, yeah? No. Mind if I take a seat? It's your restaurant. <laughs> How's it? Same as you were yesterday, all right. Actually, I, um, I wondered if I could have a quiet word. About? Oh, about a rumour I heard flying around. Oh, I. Yes, concerned... Actually, can it wait? My guest just arrived. Oh. It is. I don't want to hear it, so nice. God, you think I'd committed mass murder or something? You was. OK. So I've had a fella here, I'm very sorry and all that, but I am over 21, you know. Is that all you think this is about? A fella? You haven't just had a fella back here. You've had Barry Grant back here. You've had that book in my house. The smell of the period on my sheets. And then two Miss Lacey, you're all lovey duffy, aren't you? Tea and sympathy with some other poor sod you're supposed to be engaged to. You do all that in front of me. And I'm expected to give you a nod and a wink, am I, and leave you to it? Oh, God forgive me, but you're coming across as one right little scrubber. I just hope you're proud of yourself. Can you just give us a minute, thanks? Oh, I don't believe this. Join the club. Well, what happened? God knows. It was all over in two seconds. And um, didn't you try and stop him? Oh, I, yeah. I whipped out my machete and cut his legs off at the knees. Well, if it was my money, I'd have ripped his eyes out. Are you trying to say I just handed it over to him? No. So what happens now? I don't know. Well... The bank got some rule about this kind of thing. Aren't the insurers or something? As if. As far as they're concerned, as soon as you're out the door. Well, what did the police say? All they were worried about is why I had so much cash on me in the first place. Typical. So what about the deal? What deal? All you had to do was get the money here safe. We'd be sorted now. Thanks for your sympathy, Jack. Let's not forget who demanded cash in the first place. I needed it, didn't I? Why? That's my business. Forget it. I'll see you later. So, how did it go? What? Your salon deal. I'm sorry, that's the rumour I heard. There is no salon deal. All right, so uh, Peter's not buying you out? That's what I just said, isn't it? And I expect it's still full steam ahead as far as our agreement is concerned. Yeah, of course. Why shouldn't it be? Oh, uh, no reason. No reason at all. Did you just saw Peter getting off? All signed seals and divots, is it? So, that's it then. Tomorrow, Barry's gonna come looking for his 15,000 and I haven't got a bee. What do you think he'll say? He's already threatened to be in the bar town. He won't do that. Wouldn't put it past him. Will he never get his money then? I suppose not, no. You'll just have to give him more time. And I'll just have to have the Farnham's baby. What? I've got no option. 
You've got loads of options. Like what? Well, well maybe Barry would be interested in taking off the bar. Yeah. Or the salon. Or me car. Or everything else I've ever worked for. Then I'll be back at square one. Now, I should never have done that deal with Peter in the first place. I haven't put all them hours in just to hand it over to Barry bloody Grant. The only money he's getting from me is coming straight out of Max Farm's wallet. <laughs> Accomplished. Take your cut. Yeah. Come on. See ya. See ya. Poor Peter needs nice people pool and another holiday, both of which are available on 4Next on The Real Holiday Show. Jackie? Jackie? <sighs> oh, hey, what's wrong with this flaming collar? Oh, come here, soft lad. Oh. So. <clears throat> Just about to sums matter at this. Hey? Starts off wanting to strip you, fella. Ends up having to dress them. Oh, very nice. There you go. So, love. Do your top up. Right, I'll see you at dinner time. Yeah, yeah, and then that is me done for a fortnight. Let's think about this job, the old <laughs> Love. That's the only thing about it. Stop moaning. I wish I could. But I've been that whacked these past few weeks that if some poor kid puts a foot wrong, I've blown a gasket. Well, teach them to behave themselves. Well. Next thing I know, they'll be calling me Itla behind my back. That's good, isn't it? No, it isn't. I don't want to be called Itla. I want to be the cool teacher that they all look forward to having on a Thursday afternoon. The one who lets the kids know he thinks the headmaster's a divvy without actually saying anything. What are you giving on about? Oh, forget it. Oh, why, I... Sounds like smile the world's up and about. Mm. Suppose she'll have a gob on her all day about that clown of a barber. That's a losing 15 grand in broad daylight like that. I'm sure he didn't do his on papers. Maybe he's not as soft as he looks, eh? Eh? Jackie, think about it. Maybe it was a fiddle. Don't be stupid. Well, you never know. Listen, it's Peter we're talking about, you know. That sounds like more like Barry Grant style. Oh, don't start ranting and raving on about him again, will you? Oh, I'm sorry, but I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be ashamed of my own daughter. Yeah, well, I think he's done her a favour, if that ask me. How'd you work that out? Well, if she's on with Barry Grant, that proves that the other the fella can't be right for her, doesn't it? Oh, why didn't I look at it like that? Stands to reason. Oh! Oh, get to work out. Oh, she's gonna be lazy. 
All right, Nerky Knickers. Yeah. See you later. Do you think she'll like it? Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Just the best treat. Oh, I hope so. When do you think they'll get here? About lunchtime, I should think. I wonder what they're going to be like. Well, if Louise is anything to go by, I'm sure they'll be fine. That's what people should be saying about me. Oh, now, come on. I wonder how she'd have turned up to fight. No, you just stop that. Right now. Sorry, I can't help it. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, they're going to hate me. I know they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll probably burst in with the Ado Adoption National Guard. Have you tired and feathered? Imagine the heartache they went through before they finally got Louise. Yeah. And then tomorrow at five God, they despise these people like me. People like you? Yeah, somebody who would give her baby away as easily as I did. If it was me, I'd be grateful that someone was brave enough to make a decision that's been to the benefit of all. Yeah. Thanks. All part of the service. Hi. Tea and toast? Great. Right, this is a good girl. Come on. Oh. Do you want tea? No, I'm late. I've got to get off. Listen, was it just a flick with Grancy? Yeah. I think so. You think so? I don't know why I did it. I was just... He just fancied him. Just a bit. Listen, love, I know I'm not, like, model dad or anything like that, but watch you, will you? I mean, Barry can be a bit exciting, but... You wouldn't want your daughter marrying one? <sighs> well, given a choice between a gangster and an hairdresser, I know which one I'd be able to talk about down the swamp. Don't you start on me, sir. Me? I love the bones of him. But do you love him? Yeah. You shouldn't hesitate, girl. You either do or you don't. At least that's what Granty might make you face up to. I'll see ya. Hello, love. Eleanor. Action stations. Hi, I'm Ollie Simpson. Tom, Tom Hope. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this is my wife, Joan. Hello. Come in. There she is. Oh, Hi, Mum. <laughs> You'll be the death of me one of these days. Oh, no. You must be Eleanor. Uh oh. Aren't you trying to run before you can walk? That's gamesmanship, that. Sorry. Trying to pop me off while I'm taking my stroke. I apologise, I was just thinking aloud. Yeah, well, don't. It occurred to me that one of your birthday golf lessons might have been a useful starting point. Uh, I have played this game before, you know. They were only a refresher, Ron. This is my refresher. You don't think I'm going to make a fool of myself in front of some flash golf pro till I've remembered which end of the club you do it? Fair enough. Besides, I want to check out the local talent. Steady on, Dixon. Keep your eye on the one with the dear set of... She's mine.
everyone in that room is just as nervous as you are. Even I spent all morning on the loo. But no one's sitting in judgment. Look at it this way. The better you get to know Tom and Joan, the more you'll learn about Louise. Yeah? Are you going to tell him then? Tell who what? Tell Peter about Barry. Mum, the poor fella's just been mugged. Better give him a chance to get over that first. It's got a bit of a leak. You might need to put a towel down. But you will have the decency to put him out of his misery in the end, will you? I don't know. Why not? Don't try and tell me you love him after yesterday's performance. Maybe. Uh, and what about the other one? Do you seriously think he can offer you some kind of future? I haven't thought that far ahead. Oh, no, well, all you think about is the flash car, isn't it? And the designer suits and the sex. Listen, Pisa thinks the world of you and your daughter. There's not many men you know would take on a girl in your shoes. He's got a whole life to offer you. See, all the fellas a five-minute wonder. I know all that, Mum. But it's one hell of a five minutes. Barry Grant will bring you nothing but bad luck. Do you know what? Ron, what are you doing? I'm imagining this bulge on it. You'll give yourself a heart attack. Yeah, it will be worth it if I get myself out of this flaming bunker. <laughs> sure. Thank you. What do you think next time? I'll bring me bucket and spade. <laughs> I don't know what it is about loose friends, but to a man, they're incapable of admitting that they actually possess a Christian name. Dad, boring all to death. Here you are. Not at all. <laughs> Joxy. <laughs> I'll just take these out. And that girl with, well, basically everything, everything pierced. Excuse me a sec. Stan. Stan, I ask you. <laughs> Dad. What? Sorry, Ollie. <laughs> She likes you. Do you think so? You can always tell with our Louise. If she wasn't fussy, she'd soon let you know. This must be very hard for you. Being a mum generally is. I wouldn't know about that. I've uh, got something I thought you might want to have a look at. It's just a few pictures of Louise. School photos, holiday snaps, that kind of stuff. There's a couple of quite nice ones in there. Actually, I had a lesson off a golf pro once, and he said, look, I want you to cut a foot off each of your clubs. I said, well, I'd improve the swing. He said, no, but they'll fit in the bin easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, a 19th hole beckons. Ah, oh, tell me it's not a mirage, Bing. Feeling the pace, old son? Not half, and these new St. Louis blues are killing me. Well, I think we've both earned a couple of shandies, don't you? I just hope that we don't drop off, because I am knackered. Oh, my God, what are you doing so flat? I thought I was going to get... get mugged or something. I don't know. Look, I just wanted to see you, talk to you after yesterday. I'm sorry if I frightened you. What's the point of talking? I was playing with fire and I got burned. Your mum's not going to say anything. She doesn't have to, does she? Peter will just see this big, dark cloud hanging over her. Please don't. I thought we said goodbye yesterday. Getting caught saying goodbye, eh? 
story of my life. Getting the rug pulled away just as I think I'm getting there. Don't I know it? Is that it then? If you don't mind me asking, but how did you feel about Louise looking for her, um... I think you'll find birth mother's the right on term. <laughs> we were all for it. Well, not exactly all for it. Well, no, not exactly. Well, we were very open. She's known all about her adoption from a very early age. Used to call you her special mum, didn't we, Lou? <laughs> we just wanted her to take things slowly, maybe speak to a counsellor, that kind of stuff. I didn't need a counsellor. Mm, but of course, young Louise here, she had other ideas. Were you very headstrong yourself as a teenager? <laughs> what do you mean, as a teenager? <laughs> I, um... Uh, probably where she gets it from. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a onion, you? Oh, uh, no thanks. <laughs> Cheers. No, I wanted to apologise. For now. For coming all heavy with you in the restaurant. Don't be soft. No, whatever is your business, it's your own business, and I shouldn't have stuck my nose. It doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't affect our deal, then it's none of my concern. Well, actually, it does affect our deal. Sorry? I'm not looking to back out or anything, but things have changed. What things? Well, I was trying to find you earlier. You see, I was trying to sell parts of the salon because I need cash quick. Well, we've already doubled your money. No more pay rises. No, I don't want a pay rise. Well, what then? Well, instead of 5,000 when I conceive, and then the other 10 when I actually have it, is there any chance of all the money up front now? Oh, for God's sake. I know you must think I'm a cheek cow, but I really do need it. What for? Oh, I can't say. Are you in some kind of trouble? No. I'm just a bit stuck, that's all. A bit stuck? What do you think? Well, well, I'll have to have a word with Susanna, but I can't promise anything. There you go, my son. Oh, cheers, Ron. You're more than welcome. Mmm. Nectar. Very nice. Now, listen, I've just been having a bit of a gab with the old Jew there, and he tells me there's a ladies' night for me here next week. Really? Fancy it. Well, surely it'd be a members only affair. No, my mate behind the bar reckons he can wangle us a couple of tickets. Excellent. You didn't waste much time there, did you? We haven't got the time to waste, have we? I say. Well, is it more like it? They are. Was I right or was I right? This is the place to be. Pretty certain a couple of glances got me thrown in that direction. We're getting the alley. Which one? Rune sweat. Yeah, the face to match and all. She's yours, okay? I'll have the mate. Just a minute. You're not going to actually talk to them, are you? But why not? Well, can't we just finish our drinks first? Tell you what, I'll go over and soften them up. The better luck they might join us. <laughs> Ladies. Oh, uh, look who it is, and oh, come on, you Ron Dixon. Let's see your wallet. Watch yeah. out for the moths, ladies. What are you doing here? It's yours. What yours? Oh, thanks very much. I'll have an large gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> I fancy something barbecued. Sorry, you know it's a lot today. You know what day it is today? Easy. That's right. I haven't got it. I haven't got what? Cash. I'll tell you what, let's start again. Eh? 
I'm sorry. I haven't got it. We have the deal. What did I say it happen if you didn't pay up? OK. I'll get you the box of matches and can torch the police. Do us both a lot of good, I'm sure. Just relax, Jackie. Nobody's going to torch anything. Yet. <laughs> so do you want to tell me what happened? It's a deal, girl. With, with a certain hairdresser? Yeah. Fell through. Oh, yeyeah, that's right. He got turned over, didn't he? In broad daylight. Poor lad. How do you know? Poor old room. So, that was that. So you are going to pay me, aren't you? Of course. I have something else lined up. Another shady deal? No, I say it. I should be able to get at least half the cash within a couple of weeks. Half? Yeah. That's no good to me. I want the full amount. Pronto. OK, I'll try and get sources out. How long have I got? Well, I'll get my skates on if I was you. Cos from today... You're on one grand a week interest. You what? I don't think so. Listen, what did the Finnegans get off you? And who got rid of them for you? Eh? Hey? Exactly. Well, have a good Christmas. Yes, you too. And thanks for looking after her. No problem. I'm sure she'll be back in touch in the new year. Ready? Oh, my photo album. Oh, I'll get it. Thanks. Well, I hope not going to spend the holidays going from one wild party to the next. Why not? Because I'll be dead jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, safe journey. All the best. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, Louise. Hang on a minute. Happy Christmas. Thanks. I haven't got you one. Oh, doesn't matter, don't worry. Happy Christmas. Sitting in the house reading wrist slashes monthly, doesn't it? Cleansing up with you? Yeah, no, no, she's gone to, uh, you know, know, the Christmas party down at Kylie's school. Oh. Uh, she said hello, and uh, and Kylie said she hopes the police catch that horrible man. I still can't believe it's happened, you know, Jack. God forgive me, love, but I'd willingly string them up from the nearest lamppost. It's supposed to be day one of my master plan. So much for empire building, eh? Still. You've still got the love of a good woman, haven't I? That's the main thing. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd better get off. Yeah, OK, Jack, I'll see you. Thanks. Yeah. See you. See you. His lousy is he money? You know what for? Get this one and Lord to fight his battles for them now, is he? I'm fighting my own battles. Mine and my family's. You've been the cause of enough misery for 
badly for the Corkills over the years. Now you'll stay away from my daughter. I don't like seeing middle-aged women beating people up in here. It lowers the tone. You're in no position to take the mickey out of me, girl. Just remember. Friends, Rachel is in a position to take the mickey out of Ross's new girlfriend. And you would think she was as jealous. Ross Friday comedy kicks off next. My special little girl. Thank you, Uncle Barry. We're gonna kiss. Wow! What are you doing here? Um, he was just bringing Carly a Christmas present. It's very kind of you, but you shouldn't have bothered. Ah, oh, don't be soft. Here's one for your mum as well. Should we put them underneath the Christmas tree? Right, go and put yours there. Right, sweet soul. Come on. Come on, you Nana. Put your shopping away. Your Uncle Barry's going now, aren't you? I've got a few things to do before I go back down south. When are you coming back? Why? Would it bother you if I didn't? No. No, I just, you know, thought you might want to hang around to see Teddy or something. I think that we both need some time apart so we can think things through. There's nothing to think about. At least I know where I am with Peter. Oh, and that's enough, is it? Mr. I'll be home at five o'clock. Where's my Why are you doing this? Because I care about you. And I don't want you to waste your life with some second-rate teasy weedy, that's why. You better go. I thought you already had. I'm just getting off now. Great see um, ceilings. Have a good one, eh? I'll be um I'll be thinking about you. You know, I still think you should ring Jackie, let her know that you wanted to stay over. Oh, stop worrying, darling. I've been planning this for ages. Went over and over it on holiday just to make sure everything would be perfect. Well, you didn't discuss the surrogacy with Lisa, did you? <gasps> no, of course I didn't. I mean, she was so disapproving when we did speak to her about it. I don't want to spoiling things for us. Nothing is going to spoil it, darling. Oh, everything feels so right. I know it's going to work this time. I just know it. There you go, kid. What do you reckon? Oh, she's gonna be made when she sees this. Hang on, Jimmy. This isn't the one we ordered. Jimmy, this is the top of the range. One, the one we didn't even bother considering. And the one our Kylie set her arms on. Jimmy, we agreed we can't afford this. It's gonna have to go back. No way, Jackie. I am sick of scrimping and scraping around, trying to save a couple of bob here and a couple of quid there. And uh, where are we gonna get the extra money from? Your first wage packet. When you start a new, new job. What new job? Jimmy, I can't work when I've got Will to see to. And it's not just him, you know. Our Kylie spends more time with me than she does with our Lindsay. Yeah, I know. But if I'm your boss, I'll be able to sort the kids between us. 
Jimmy, what are you talking about? Love, Mick Jono's trial starts next month, doesn't it? So? Yeah, well, I know it's tight, like, but... Well, you can't smother the mother-in-law and just walk away from it. It's murder. They're going to throw the key away. What's that got to do with us? Love, Mick is going to need someone to look after the chippy when he's on the inside. Why shouldn't it be me? What? I got it all worked out. We're going to be quinting with us three working in there. Tell you what, mate, I thought I'd gone mad without Ruthie this Christmas. Well, this lot makes me look like Scrooge. I want the kids to have a really good crimbo, sin. Make up for everything they've been through this year. Yeah, spoil them a bit, they deserve it, eh? Yeah. So, what have you and Carmen got planned for crimbo day? Well, we'll probably spend all morning trying to get Tim out of bed, then the afternoon wishing we hadn't, in between trying to sabotage the karaoke machine and the Spice Girls <laughs> tapes we bought for Mel. <laughs> so, a normal family Christmas, eh? Yeah, well, sounds good to me, mate. Yeah, me too. Well, at least the kids are sorted if the verdict does go against me next month. Yeah, well, they'll be sound with Josie, won't they, eh? I mean, man, that must be a weight off your mind, what with everything that's going on. Yeah. I've been so busy trying to sort Leo and Jim, Emma. I haven't even thought about the chicken. Well, the thought of selling up. You know, we're investing the money for when... Well, you know, when everything gets back to normal. I don't know, Sam. And all the work into building it up. I mean, something for the kids. What kind, kind of future for them? I wish I could have helped it a little bit more, you know, but what with the shop and everything, yeah, I couldn't. I know it. Anyway, it might come up, might it? Hey, let's look on the bright side, eh? Yeah. At least I've got Christmas with the kids. Don't worry about the business when the time comes, don't you? Right, this'll be a few minutes and I'll bring it over. Yes. <sighs> That's all I need. What can I get you? Beer, wine, slap her on the face. I could drink Jackie Corker. £15,000, please. I haven't got it. Well, in that case... Mike, box of matches over here, please. You don't like me, I'm saving Barry. You can't do this. Oh, yeah, I can. That's the old point. I can get it for you, I promise. I just need more time. Look, Jack, me and you go back along me. But you knew what you were doing when you asked me to get rid of the Finnegans. I did that. I, I took the risk. And now I want me money. Fair enough. Look, I'd love to walk away, but if I did that, I mean... All right. Seeing as it's Christmas, I'm going away now until the new year. I'll give you until then to get the money together. I'll have it for you, in full. First week of January. And don't forget, a grand a week on top interest. Otherwise, this place will get surprisingly warm for this time of year. OK? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'll see you then. Happy Christmas. You all right, Jack? Yeah, fine. What can I get you, Julia? Yeah. Can I have two snowballs to take out, please, love? Me. Setting up for a sachet, Julia. I'm on an errand of mercy, if you must know, Mike Dixon. I thought I'd pop over and can keep Mrs. Fan. I'm coming for a bit later on. Oh, you're all right, Julia. They're on the house scenes for a good cause. Really good of you. Only I just didn't want to see the poor soul sitting on her own on Christmas Eve. Not with the head full of memories that she's going to have. <sighs> Do you know what, love? I reckon it's just as well that we can't see into the future. Yeah. Because if ever a woman needed children, it's Mrs. Farmer. She's a natural mother, you know. You only have to see her with them children of hers. See you, love. See ya. Hey, oh, hope you're not leaving without giving me a Christmas kiss. Mm. Oh, that ain't my year. Oh, Merry Christmas, Lord. Thanks, mate. See you later. Hiya. Oh, yeah. What can I get you? Just a cheese and onion sandwich to go, please. White or brown? White, please. Look, I'm really sorry about it. Yeah, me and all. Funny how it all goes pear shaped when there's money involved, isn't it? Still bars, though, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are. Happy again, Bob. Hey, Tracy said I'd find you here. No, just grabbing a sign in between perms, you know. I thought you were working at all. I just came to see how you are. Apart from me, fifteen thousand pound, Daddy. Did the police come up with anything yet? They reckon the mugger must have known I was carrying all that cash. Well, how? Well, that's what I said. I never told anyone except you and Jackie. Oh, I thought Julia knew about the deal as well. 
Yeah, but she didn't know I was getting the money in cash, did she? Listen, Lynn, you didn't say anything to your dad about this, did you? Oh, come on, Peter. You can't seriously think my dad had anything to do with it. No, I'm just clutching at straws, Lynn. I popped these on here, eh, love? Only as my mother used to say, Christmas isn't Christmas without homemade mince pies. Oh, that's very kind of you, Julia. As long as you've got enough left for yourself. <laughs> Half a dozen will do me, with me being on my own all over the holiday like. Uh, yes. Oh, got guests tomorrow, have you, Dave? Just Ron's too, and uh, young Katie Rogers. Oh, it would be lovely having a house full of youngsters. <laughs> Now just remember to rub half a lemon over the skin and it'll crisp it up a treat. Oh, right. Yes, yes, I will. Thanks. Right, well, I'd better go over the road to make sure that Mrs. Farnham's all right. That's very, very thoughtful of you, Julia. Well, like my Arthur used to say, it doesn't hurt to think of others as at this time of the year. Now, you go off and enjoy it yourself. Something special on, have you, Dave? Uh, no, no, no. Just a bit of a tour at the golf club. Don't you worry about Mrs. Farnham. I'll make sure that she's all right. Yes. Uh, Julia, look, um, why don't you join us here for Christmas dinner? Oh, well, if you're sure that Ron won't mind. <laughs> oh, Dave, are you on the edge? Oh. Now then, Julia, put him down, will you? You never know where he's been. <laughs> oh, are you, love? Oh, that's a shame. Your Jackie got you working in the bar tonight, has she? Hey. No, no, she hasn't. I'm, I'm going to the golf club with Bugalugs here. Oh, well, which one of you's got it wrong, then? Him. It's a ladies' night at the golf club, isn't it? That's some pensioners do down the Legion. Ron, I've already pointed out to you the invitation said for sherry and biscuits, and that requires lounge suit, not black tie. Well, I mean, it does seem a bit over the top for a glass of uh, Montalada and a couple of Capaldi's. Well, that's where you're wrong, isn't it? Both of you. I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, no? Fiver says I'm the bell of the ball. Make it ten and you're on. Don't. You will be, Ron. You will be. Hello, love. Hiya. You finished for the day? Yeah. Just trying to decide whether to treat myself or not, you know, brighten the foot up like. Oh, go on, go mad. It'll do you good. <laughs> yeah, why not? Could you use gin or. You know, they say the first Christmas is the worst, love. After that, it gets easier. I'll see you. So, are you going to pay me now or knock it off me rent? Actually, Ron, this is most unusual. In my experience, sherry and biscuits is always an informal affair. Oh, really? Then I suggest you better start studying the country life, mate. And don't you show me up like this again. Actually, Ron, oh, son, I think I could be right after all. Hey? Try. Thank you. Help, yes. Heath. Uh, hang on a minute. This will get me money's worth. Perhaps you'll listen to the voice of experience next time. Excuse me. Are you sweet, medium, or dry? Do I what, love? The sherry. Oh, sorry. No, uh, I'm just a guest, same as yourself. Oh, dear, I'm awfully sorry. Only with the suit and everything, I thought. Slight misunderstanding of the invitation. Oh, I see. You're the new here, aren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, it's uh, our first function. Oh. I thought I didn't recognise you, only I know most of the members here. What with my late husband being club captain. Oh, you're late. We've just started playing here, actually. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you both. Molly Marchbank. Dave Crosby, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, Ronald Dixon. Ron to my friends. Would you uh, care for this, Molly? Oh, thank you, Ron. <laughs> only I'll need another one for my friend. Uh, uh, be my guest. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. And perhaps we'll see you a bit later. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have any trouble finding a waiter, I'm sure my friend here will be happy to oblige. <laughs> here we are, love. Why don't we just enjoy ourselves seeing that it's Christmas? Thanks, Julia. 
I thought Mr Farnham would be working and I knew you'd be glad of a bit of company. Just as well I came round when I did. I felt so positive about things earlier on. I had loads of time to think while I was away and... I hope we could get through this Christmas without... I, I thought if I made the effort, then at least we could both pretend for a while. And then I found these. We all made them together one Christmas when they... Why don't we just pop them back in here, love? Out of hand. I miss them, Julia, and I know I can never replace them, but I want another baby so much. I know you do. And sometimes I... I feel as if I'm being disloyal to Matthew and Em, but it's not wrong of me to want another child, is it? No, of course it's not, love. Those two little loves would have been made up with a little brother or sister. Do you really think so? No one loved them children more than you did. But it's time you started looking forward again. So, why don't we just drink up before we get this lot sorted out? And let's see if we can't get Christmas off to a really good start. Well, I'll call you next week anyway, you know. I'll catch you later. Oh, all right, then. Okay. More sherry, madam? Yes, please. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, Ron. Are you and your friend enjoying yourselves? Yeah, yeah, apart from the fancy dress, you know. I've had one or two iffy looks off some of the other guests. Take no notice. You always get one or two snobby types in a club like this. My Norman wouldn't give them the time of day. No, but he didn't need to, did he? You know, with him being top brass like. <laughs> How he ever got to be club captain, I'll never know. <laughs> there were a few noses put out a joint round here when his name went up. He was a lovely man. Never let success change him. He stayed the same old Norman he always was. Yeah. Was he a, a, a businessman? Well, he preferred to call himself a humble shopkeeper. Oh, really? What line was he in? He was a butcher. Oh, right. OK, um, it looks as if I'm needed to help organise the raffle. Perhaps I'll catch up with you later. Yeah. So, have you uh, scored, as they say? Not worth the trouble, mate. She's only told me that her husband was a butcher. Would you much? Of course. Of course, that's why the name was so familiar. Why, do you get your chops off of them or something? Along with Harvard from North of England, yes. March bags. Butchery chain. As in one in every high street. Absolutely, well, sir. Looks like you've scored a home in one. Would you be the first attempt? Right. Better get going. Callie will be wondering where I am. Thanks for coming around, babe. I could about to slip with me this before you showed up. Oh, it's not that bad, is it? Let's just kicked a few of my plants into touch for the rest of the season, you know. All of the things I had planned for this place. I borrowed that money so I could increase my income. Not hand half of it over to the bank every month, but not to show for it. Look, all it means is we'll have to cut down on a few things. Lights out on that. Yeah. Right, come on. <sighs> and listen, we'll manage. Who cares, as long as I've got you. Why am I always over that catch you? Look, I've got to get on. We haven't seen what it's over. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted you to know Ori Lane's been in touch. What? What's happened to his tenure on it? Yeah, they're both fine. It's nothing like that. So what's yours? Well, uh, it's just that it's Christmas and she's been thinking about him. Yeah? And? And she wanted me to tell you how bad she feels about everything. She doesn't listen to this. Look, she knows she was wrong getting off like that. She's dead miserable, Mick. She's missing you and the kids. Look, she made a decision when she got off and dumped me right in it. And she's got to live with that. She knows that. She just wants to see it again, to talk. I'm sorry, Cassie. I'm not interested. Mick, please, Mick, listen to me. Yeah? No, you listen to, to me. I've got two kids waiting for me at home. And they're important because they're here and they need looking after. As far as I'm concerned, Elaine's on her own.
thought you'd already gone. I couldn't resist watching you consoling the crimper over his sudden loss. Don't make fun of him. We well, should be more careful, shouldn't we? But who knows what else he might lose, eh? He's not going to lose anything else. I suppose after losing 15,000 big ones, it makes you careful, doesn't it? Did you open your present? You knew, didn't you? You what? About Peter getting the cash out the bank. You what? I think you and me had better talk. Actually, I'm usually away by now chasing sun, you know, but, well, with me having this interest in this cafe bar, I thought... I better stay around, keep an eye on things. You sound just like my Norman. He never got around to retiring either. <laughs> I miss him, you know. Especially at Christmas. It just doesn't mean as much without Norman there to share it with. Yeah. I reckon New Year's the worst. I mean, there doesn't seem to be any point in having a new beginning when there's no one to share it with. We always came here for New Year's Eve. But the tickets are like gold or something. I got mine last week. Ex-Captain's Perks. Ah, yeah. And you'll be bringing a friend along, obviously. Well, I usually come with my mother-in-law. Likes a bit of a knees up, does she? <laughs> well, yes. But she's poorly at the moment, I'm afraid, so I won't be able to come. Unless, of course, I can get somebody to sit there. You know, you're very welcome to my other ticket, Ron, if you'd like. It'd be a shame to waste it. Oh, yes, please, that'd be sound. And uh, if you could get a sitter, maybe we could, um, come together. Well, oh, that would be lovely. Look, you give me your phone number and I'll give you a ring next week. Right, uh, as I say, I'm staying with a friend at the moment. Oh, what, while you're flat and the world's being revamped? Uh, yes, yes. Of course, if my interior designer hadn't insisted on shipping stuff over from France, the place would have been finished by now. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I wondered if I could get you both a drink. Mm. Uh, brandy and French, of course. Not for me, thank you. I'm sorry, but I promised to be back early. It was lovely meeting you both. Albeit briefly. So I'll hear from you next week, then. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Next week. I'll fix myself up with a date for New Year's Eve. All being well. All being well. Well, <laughs> with your flat on the wood and your interior designer, it seems to spend the whole evening telling the most elaborate untruths. What the earth are you playing at? Oh, I'm not playing, Bing. Oh, no, far from it. I'm securing myself a nice, comfortable future. Molly doesn't strike me as being stupid. Another hour or so of listening to your nonsense, and she's bound to realize you're lying. Yeah, well, that's a risk that I'm prepared to take. The only real risk you're taking, as far as I can see, is of making a total and complete fool of yourself. And you haven't answered my question yet. Why haven't you opened your presents? It's not the present. No one but me, you, and Jackie knew Peter was getting that 15,000 in cash. It was just some no mark got lucky, that's all. And why would they pick on Peter? Well, it just happened to be there. Maybe it was just some crackhead looking for his next 20 quid. And you swear you didn't tell anyone about the cash? I didn't tell anyone. I'm sorry. It's just so unfair. Well, do you want me to tell you that life's unfair? Don't I know it? Well, don't we all? Anyway, I better go. Look, before you go, will you promise me one thing? What? That while I'm away, you'll think about all this. About what you really want. Because I can't believe that you're just going to throw it all away by marrying scissor hands. I mean, you're worth more than oh, that. Don't start, buddy. Yeah, but I mean it, Linz. This isn't about me and you. It's about... It's about what's best for you, with or without me. Just promise me you'll think about it. And I'll do the same. Happy Christmas, eh? See ya. Yeah, and listen. Hope you enjoy your business. See you, buddy.
Everyone needs friends at Christmas. Here on 4, you're getting as much as you can handle with the first of two episodes tonight. Next.